The NYPD is announcing it's beefing up training for its officers to handle active shooters, part of the terror alert here at home, with new signs this week about just how real the threat is. Here's senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas. In Washington, President Obama meeting with the British Prime Minister amid terror fears. Al-Qaeda and ISIL are actively trying to inspire and support people within our own countries. The threat from homegrown radicals is real, as we see unfold in this undercover FBI video. Amin al-Khalifi caught in an FBI sting plotting a massacre of Congress. Seen here going into Home Depot buying nails to use as shrapnel in a suicide vest. Thick ones I got, thick ones, not thin ones. The one who's gonna make damage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later, driving into a West Virginia quarry with men he thought were Al Qaeda to test a suicide bomb. I want you to place the call so you can see how it works. Okay, now hit send. In the end, complaining the bomb wasn't big enough. Oh, brother, brother, this is this is not strong enough, man. Khalifi was arrested in 2012, just two blocks from Capitol Hill. The FBI says he was inspired in part by the online post of Al Qaeda radical cleric Anwar Alalaki, killed by the U.S. in 2011. There is a population of young folks, largely young men, who connect with that extremist message. And there may be many more like Khalifi. Christopher Lee Cornell, a 20-year-old from Ohio, was arrested just this week after buying two M15 assault rifles, allegedly planning his own attack on Capitol Hill. Cornell is one of more than 50 suspected homegrown extremists arrested by the FBI in recent years, many radicalized online and through social media. And in the last year alone, at least 12 Americans caught trying to join ISIS in Syria. Then there's the threat of al-Qaeda cells in Syria and Yemen still targeting the West. No specific plot has been identified, but could there be sleeper cells here? I think there are sleeper cells not only in France, but certainly in other countries, and yes, even in our own. I don't think that we have any information that would indicate, certainly with regard to the homeland, uh, that there is any ongoing threat. Pierre is here with us now, along with John Cohen, former counterterrorism coordinator at the Department of Homeland Security. Thanks to you both. And Pierre, let me, let me go to you first. This really has Washington on edge. Martha, it's a tense moment. There were two signs of it this week. The Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson, expanded security at airports and also at federal buildings. And the FBI director himself participated in a teleconference call to exhort vigilance. And, and John Cohen, let, let's address this issue of, of sleeper cells in the U.S. Obviously, they're trying to hide. So how do you go about finding them? How do you track somebody like that? Well, several ways. The, the FBI and law enforcement have thousands of investigations across the country that are open today. The bigger concern are those people who haven't risen to the attention of law enforcement. They've been discreet in their communications. They haven't been spending a lot of time um, training with, uh, with recruiters or, or meeting with recruiters. Though, that's where the difficulty lies. And that's where strategies that involve working with local communities um, together so that we can identify people who are exhibiting the warning signs and take steps to deal with those people, that's so, important. So federal agencies dealing with local communities, this doesn't seem like an especially good time for that to happen, is it? No, I mean, I'm hearing from police officials around the country, the relationship with the federal government um, is, is unusually strained at this point in time. Uh, However, uh, the FBI is working closely. They're sharing more information than ever with local authorities. They're providing more training than ever with local authorities. They're working to ensure local, uh, local jurisdictions are ready to deal with active shooter situations. Um, we'll just have to keep working on it. And, and Pierre, I, I, I was struck this week by the, the issues in the D.C. metro, the subway here. We weren't ready for that. A woman died in that subway because it filled with smoke others injured. So are we ready for an attack here if something happens? Well, the short answer in D.C., in that case, the answer was no. And I know federal authorities I spoke to were mortified, quite frankly, that they were not able to get in there and get those people out more quickly. Huge issue. And Martha, going back to one point that you made about how you track these people, the FBI has been watching and monitoring travel patterns. Also, they're uh, very robust on the Internet, looking at who's posting these radical messages online. I know you'll both be back. Thank you very much to both of you.